I guess it was in my 20s, you know, and I, when I, there was a period when I suddenly became very interested in what was happening in contemporary American fiction, and so I, I began to read a lot of it, I mean, in, of various different kinds. I mean, not only, I mean, on the one hand, Bellow, but on the other hand, Thomas Pynchon and, you know, writers like that. So, and I suppose I was trying to remember which was the first book that I read, but I suppose it must have been Herzog. Um, and the, I guess the two books that made a real impression on me, I mean, Herzog is a wonderful book, but, but I think that Augie Marsh and Humboldt were the two that really went, it meant a lot to me. And, and, and even now, I mean, if I find myself picking up Bellow, it would, it would probably be either Humboldt or Augie Marsh that I would have a look at. I don't know, there's a, there's a thing about the great books that you can just open them at random and read a paragraph and they help you in some way. So and certainly, I mean, when I'm writing a novel myself, I tend not to read a lot of fiction. You know, uh, I mean, I tend to, I, I have a habit of reading a little poetry every day just as a way of getting myself to pay attention to language, you know. Um, but there are some writers that sometimes I do just pick up and read a paragraph, and I think Humboldt's Gift is one of the books that, that I use in that way. I mean, I don't read, I don't read a chapter, I don't, you know, I, I just open it, look at something, close the book, and, and proceed. Um, but again, it's a very funny book. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's in parts a very dark book, but uh, particularly as the character of Humboldt, you know, declines in the book. But, uh, but, but he's, he's a cruel and funny character as well. Um, and his relationship with, with Charlie Citrine is, a, is essentially, a, well, it's a tragic comic relationship, but it's a comic relationship, you know. Um, I've always loved that, you know, Humboldt's contempt for Charlie's uh, French award, you know, he gets this chevalier. <laughs> and Humboldt refers to him throughout as the chevalier. <laughs> which, I mean, um, it's, it's just, it's a wonderful comic little device. And the, the book is full of those things. Me, what, what do well, we get from, can we well, use a dose of riffs also? Well, the point about Bellow is that he's enormously enjoyable. You know, that, that he is a great storyteller. And, and his books are, you know, the, those, particularly, I would say, those three books, Herzog, Humboldt's Gift, and The Adventures of Augie Marsh, you know, are, they're crammed full of story, incident, comedy, observation. Um, there's hardly a paragraph in which there isn't something that explodes off the page and makes you think again, you know. And so, yeah, I mean, I think these are... These are some of the great masterpieces of American literature. And the trouble with saying great masterpiece is that there's a way in which it puts people off reading. Because, you know, a great masterpiece is something that sits on a shelf and, you, and gathers dust. You know, but actually, these are just terrific books. You know? and, and I think I would envy somebody who had never read The Adventures of Augie Marsh because they would still have it ahead of them to read. You know, it's... it's uh, um, Sometimes you, you hear writers say, oh, I've never read such and such book, which is one of your favorite books. And you think, lucky you, you know, because, because now you could have that experience of reading it for the first time. And I think, you know, anyone who, I mean, I would be very surprised if, if people picking up Augie Marsh or Humboldt's Gift were not immediately absorbed by the world, the world of the book, because it's very attractive. Mm -hmm. oh, it's getting drunk.